um, you might have realized that uh, we, we, instead of starting by calculating magnetic fields, we started by noting that there is such a thing as a magnetic force. Um, and that's just because we uh, noted as scientists um, early on that there was a force that couldn't be accounted for by electric charges or gravitation or the normal things. And so we noted there was a magnetic force. And so now if there's a magnetic force, we got to be able to calculate magnetic fields. So check magnetic force. How do we calculate magnetic fields? Um, so the first thing to, to, to remember is that, um, is that we have argued that um, because a magnet, this is a really important argument, because a magnet doesn't exert a force on a charge, the two are, at least for the sake of uh, our class, uh, or this, this the uh, 18th, 19th century um, electricity and magnetism, um, there's no force, uh, sorry, a magnetic field does not exert a force on a stationary charge, uh, but a, magnetic, a magnet does exert a force on another magnet. Right, these are two separate situations. No force. Force. That, that's what allowed us to determine that there was a, uh, a difference between a magnetic and electric force. Um, <clears throat> but... So, so that, that so we, we, we you know named a new force. We had electric force first. We named a new force. This is magnetic force. But we find that a north uh, that a magnet does exert a force on a moving charge. So therefore, a moving charge because a magnet must only exert a force on another magnet. A moving charge must be a magnet. Um, so a moving charge must have a magnetic field. Okay, so that was a conclusion that we had already come to. I'm just reminding you of that. It's a really important conclusion that a moving charge must have a magnetic field. So we want to calculate the magnetic field from a moving charge. Okay, so um, just like Coulomb's law, right, for uh, the uh, which gave us the electric field from a moving, uh, for, sorry, the electric field from a charge uh, or the force between two charges, and then we define field as force per unit charge. We have um, for the magnetic fields, we have Biot-Savart law. Biot-Savart law is, right, we're just saying it's an observation. Um, two very smart scientists figured this out at some point. It's one of the right, basic things that we're going to start from. The Biot-Savart law, whoops, we take a, a current carrying wire and we take just a little piece of that current carrying wire, right, our DL, our little piece of the current carrying wire that is approximately straight at that point, that that little piece of the current carrying wire exerts a magnetic field at point P, which is a distance R, or a um, not only a distance R, but a, well, yeah, yeah, a perpendicular distance. Uh, sorry, I got to be careful here. Hold on a second. I was making that too simple. Um, we don't. We, it's not necessarily a perpendicular distance. Let's just say I want to know what because this wire creates a magnetic field everywhere around it. I want to know what is the magnetic field at some arbitrary point P um, due to just that little DL. And this is just, this is the observation. We are just taking this as a given. If we draw the vector r from dl to p, and let's just draw the direction of dl, right? dl is the direction of the current. And so we call this angle theta. So if, if r was the perpendicular distance, then theta would just be 90 degrees, but that would be the field at that point. What, and what is the field at some arbitrary point that is some angle theta um, and r away? So we're going to call that R, the radius, uh, and that the Biot-Savart law tells us, whoops, not ds, magnetic field due to that little piece, so just db, the piece, the part of the magnetic field due to just the little piece, is equal to uh, constant mu zero over four pi, we'll talk about those constants in a second, i, the current, did I say ds, dl, i dl, over r squared, sine theta. This, you know, sometimes we talk about specifics, sometimes we kind of talk about general. This is the most general that we can get. This is a single um, infinitesimal element of current, um, and it's the field at a point, an arbitrary point P, due to that infinitesimal piece of current. So we can use this to calculate the field of any collection of current elements, which would just be a current wire, for example, the entire wire, right? We would have to integrate this. Um, 
and uh, or even a single moving charge because a single moving charge is the same as a current element right as a small length dl of current that is the same as a moving charge so this is um, a general formula so what we're going to do is we're going to take this general formula we're going to explore it a little bit and then we'll get to a more um, an easier to use um, uh, just like Gauss's law was perhaps a little easier to use when we get a collection of um, charges uh, just like Gauss's law we're gonna have Ampere's law which allows us to use a collection of current elements to calculate magnetic fields but this is the most general just talk about the constants mu zero over four pi remember with electric fields we had something similar one over four pi epsilon naught notice the difference here is that mu is on the top epsilon was epsilon was on the bottom there is this subscript of zero uh, but there's a four pi right so as a reminder um, for electric fields um, we had for a single point charge k dq over r squared um, where k is equal to one over four pi epsilon zero so as a reminder you know this is a very similar formula for magnetic field and electric field but let's look at the difference the difference is um, that you have a mu zero on top instead of an epsilon zero on the bottom and you have a sine theta the other difference is we need to talk about the direction because notice that for de i just wrote the magnitude for db i wrote the magnitude for de remember the direction was radially away from positive charges uh, in this case for db the direction is into the page. Um, and what I'm uh, into the page according to the right or right hand rule. What I mean by that is um, that if you put your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers point in the direction of the current. So this one would be into the page. If the current was going to the left instead, put your thumb in the direction of the current, then your fingers at the point P would be coming out of the page. So um, for the one for the example shown, it's into the page, but it's either going to be into or out of the page. Okay, so the directions are different, the constants are different. Um, uh, just to note, mu zero is the value four pi times ten to the minus seventh. Whoops, not seventeenth. It's just a given constant, uh, four pi times ten to the minus seventh. And then you know what are the units? Well. If magnetic field, if if this is an MK, if this is all an MKS units, if the magnetic field gives Teslas, then mu zero has got to be Tesla, and then um, notice that we've got a current on top, so it's got to be per um, ampere, and we've got a distance on top and two distances on the bottom, so it's got to be a meter, so it's Tesla meter per ampere. So those are the units of um, mu zero. Mu zero is called the per let's see epsilon zero was the permittivity so mu zero is the permeability i always have to think of one to remember the other permeability permeability constant and the zero does mean permeability of free space just like epsilon zero was permittivity of free space and remember what epsilon zero meant epsilon eps or epsilon meant how does um you know what what does the material how does the material that the electric field is in um, impact the electric field? So in free space, it's epsilon zero. In a material, it was just epsilon for that material. Same thing with mu zero. Mu zero is how does the material that the magnetic field is in impact the magnetic field? So in free space, in a vacuum, we're going to use mu zero. If we were in something, if this um, current was going through water, then we would use mu for water, the permeability of water, and the magnetic field would be modified um, by the, the water or the material that it's in. Okay, so I just wrote down what I, a little bit of what I said about mu. So now let's just take this um, and we're going to write this in a slightly different way because there are a few extra variables here we can actually simplify this a little bit um, <clears throat> I don't know if you're going to see it as simple simplified we're going to take into account the direction uh, in this equation so we don't have to write always you know the magnitude on the right hand rule 
um, we really want to write an equation that takes into account the direction, and we can do that by um, thinking about the r hat direction, right? So r squared is the radius, um, but the r hat direction. Go on, uh, and if d dl cross r hat, right? Dl. So what I put on top now, what I replaced. Remember, I replaced i dl sine theta with dl uh, i dl cross r hat. Dl cross r hat is the same as dl, and r hat is a unit vector in the direction of, of r. So the magnitude um, of r hat is 1. The magnitude of all unit vectors is 1 um, times the sine of the angle between l and r. The sine of the angle between l and r. And it's got a direction given by the right-hand rule um, of where it's l cross r. Right, the direction is given by L cross R. So now let's look back and see, oh, well, that's the same thing. So that shows me that the, the, the formula I have written on the top of this page is the same as this formula right here, right? These two are the same formulas because if I replace DL cross R hat with DL sine theta with the direction is the right-hand rule, then we've got DL sine theta where the direction is by the right-hand rule. Um, and the, again, the right-hand rule is um, where we have said it's, L first, L cross R. So DL is in, in this example, is to the right. R is um, lower down on the page. So you curl your fingers toward from L to R, from DL to R, and your thumb goes into the page. So indeed, the direction is into the page. So this is the way to succinctly write that. You can always replace that with, um, you know, I, DL, sine theta, where it's given by the right-hand rule from where it's the, the direction of L cross R vectors, whatever. Um, so, but this is the way to write it. And I will also point out that you will often see this written, because R hat is just the R direction, uh, you will often see this written as, see this written uh, in, some, in a way that um, maybe seems a little counterintuitive, but uh, it is very intuitive to some people. Um, that instead of r hat on top, we put the vector r, and remembering that the vector r is the uh, magnitude r times the r hat direction, um, that means that we have uh, put an r on top, so we got to put another r on the bottom, and so we get r cubed on the bottom. So if it's dl cross vector r on top instead of the r hat direction, then we would have an r cubed on the bottom. Those two are the exact same formulas mathematically, exact same. Obviously, this is all just um, gobbledygook until we figure out how to apply it to a situation. It's not so bad. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a current carrying wire, whether it's uh, that was supposed to just be a current carrying wire, whether it's a straight wire, or whether it's a, a, a wonky wire, um, and we're going to say, well, the magnetic field due to that current carrying wire um, at a point P, some distance away from the wire, um, is going to be equal to mu naught over 4 pi times the integral of i dl cross r hat over r squared. And we're going to add that up, right? We're going to take all the little dls along the wire, and we're going to add it up along the whole wire to figure out what all of their contributions are to the magnetic fields at point P. Um, not trivial, but we'll do some examples next time. Uh, and then, and then once we figure out some, we see how to apply this. Uh, we will actually use the results of um, the magnetic field of a straight wire in order to um, just look at magnetic fields of wires. Uh, okay, I I don't know how clear that was, but <clears throat> what we're going to do is calculate the magnetic field due to a, any given current carrying wire, um, and then we'll just uh, go on from there.